Welcome, welcome, welcome everybody to another episode of Fantasy News. I, as you know, am your disheveled goblin host, Daniel Green. Today I'm like extra disheveled. This is this is a, a reshuffling if, if I've ever seen one. <laughs> and we have quite a bit of hardcore fantasy news today, followed up by some of that good old pop culture fantasy news. So without any further ado, let's just jump on out of it. Because... That doesn't make sense. In the first bit of hardcore fantasy news we're going to cover here today, Christopher Paolini has actually released the cover of his upcoming sci-fi novel, To Sleep in a Sea of Stars. I really dig this vibe. It kind of has this surreal, deep space vibe, and I'm all about it. Definitely also agrees with the title, but if you want to know more, of course, links to this in the description down below, as well as every story I'm going to cover here today. You know how it goes. If you'd like to know the synopsis of this story that has been released so far, here's what Paolini has put on his website. During a routine survey mission on an uncolonized planet, xenobiologist Kira Navrez finds an alien relic that thrusts her into the wonders and nightmares of first contact. Epic space battles for the fate of humanity take her to the farthest reaches of the galaxy and, in the process, transform not only her, but the entire course of history. Seems like an interesting concept from a modern sci-fi author, which I guess we are officially going to be referring to Paolini as from now on. I'm a fan of the guy, I look forward to seeing his growth, and I'm very excited to see what he can bring to the table after his hiatus. But next up, we have an announcement from Anthony Ryan. He tweeted out, Announcing the Kraken's Tooth, book two of the Seven Swords, with this cover here. And Tor put out an announcement for the upcoming book, Harrow the Ninth. What they've said is if you pre-order the book now, you can go ahead and read the entire first act. It has a pretty badass cover. I don't know a whole lot about this one coming down the road, but I sure am curious now. Being confident enough in your work to put out the entire first act and knowing this is going to hook people it's kind of bold. I know it's not unheard of. Similar things have certainly been done before. Chapters being more common than the entire first act. And that combined with a pretty cool darkish looking cover has me curious. And from author Olivia Chadha, we have the announcement that Rise of the Red Hand is coming down the road. For those of you who like revolutionary dystopian sci-fi, this seems like it might be right up your lane. And now definitely a story I've put in the title and you're probably coming here for. We have a release date tweeted out by Joe Abercrombie, the creator of the First Law series. Joe Abercrombie tweeted out that the next entry in his new First Law series, The Trouble with Peace, will be coming out September 15th in the US and 17th in the UK. Very much so looking forward to this one. For those of you who aren't aware, he does have a new First Law series going, A Little Hatred being the first entry in that review for that right here on the channel, and it lived up to the legacy of First Law. Won't get any more here. Go ahead and check out the full review if you want to, but First Law is going strong. Now, did you want some Witcher news? Don't worry about the question either way, because we only have a little bit, enough to satiate some and not too much to overwhelm others who are suffering from Witcher fatigue. But we did have an article released by Tour where apparently the creative process for the hit song, Toss a Coin to Your Witcher, is discussed. So, of course, go ahead and check that out if you'd like to. But did you remember the rumor? And I did very much so reiterate in the last episode of Fantasy News, rumor that Natalie Dormer would be in The Witcher show. Well, her team has officially denied it, but Netflix has remained silent. We have seen teams of actors deny roles that are actually happening before because they don't want to be the ones to announce it, and they know that saying nothing will pretty much confirm it, but now I am leaning more towards the camp of maybe this was just some gigantic coincidence that she happened to be right next to The Witcher filming location. It's still a bit up in the air, especially since Netflix hasn't officially denied it. I don't know. Curious. Curious. But speaking of the other side of casting speculation news, and that's casting con con confirmation? We'll go with confirmation. Christian Bale will for sure be in Thor Love and Thunder, the project directed by Taka Watiti, which I have said before and is known, but it's a great transition from that last story into this next one, where apparently also the Guardians of the Galaxy will be making an appearance in Thor 4. I thought Thor would probably make a cameo in Guardians 3, but now it seems like no, it's going to be Guardians in Thor 4. Although this hasn't been confirmed by sources I 100% trust, it does seem likely. They know the more team-up movies make more money, and having Guardians and Thor and Thor and Guardians, just poor Kane and Lowe's Dose kind of situation, might be beneficial for all around. Now, let's just go ahead and step away from the MCU here. We don't want to get too far into that, and let's talk about something coming down the road from Netflix, because Netflix is dropping a dystopian horror film called The Platform. If you'd like to check out the trailer, of course, it's available on YouTube. I'll have it. You know, I keep saying that in this episode. You, you know where the links are. They're under that 
little foldy thing where it says show more. But this one looks interesting. I kind of like it. This article is claiming it's in the same vein as Snowpiercer, which if it is, that actually gets me quite a bit more excited because I liked Snowpiercer uh, to a great extent. I still think it's underhyped, even though it has this strong cult following. I think that needs to grow. So if you haven't seen Snowpiercer, check out Snowpiercer. It's really, really good. We've also been given an exclusive look into Stormfront, who will be appearing in season two of The Boys. And if you have not checked out The Boys on Amazon Prime, do so. It's so good. I loved season one. It's funny, it's dramatic, it's tense, it has probably the best villain I've seen in TV in the last five years. Definitely worth your time. But now we need to get into the serious fantasy news of the day. This is big deal stuff, guys. This is where the earth-shattering political landscapes of fantasy shift, and that is with Daniel Radcliffe answering some hypothetical Harry Potter questions. Mainly, how did Voldemort sleep on the back of Quirrell's head? Did one of them choke? Did one of them not need to breathe? Did they sleep on their side? Well, Daniel Radcliffe speculated, and here is his answer on how the two-faced-on-one-head amalgamation of Quirrell and Voldemort caught some Zs. What's that? How did he sleep at night? I would say the only practical thing to do there would be to sleep on your side, unless Voldemort doesn't need air, which I'm not sure. As long as there's breath coming into the body, he's probably asleep on his front because it would still circulate around the whole thing. I'm guessing back of the head Voldemort could survive off front of the head Ian Hart's air supply? So there you go. Daniel Radcliffe isn't sure is the response you got, but it still caused articles and news in the Harry Potter community. Ah, oh, but it is, it's funny. I don't know. It's, what do you think? Do you think that the air circulates? <laughs> Do you think that the air circulates through the whole body or no? Quarrel must sleep on his side so that the phases both can breathe. Where's the brains? How is that not the bigger question? D did the brains mush? Oh my God. We also got a look at the Altered Carbon re-sleeved adaptation coming to Netflix. Yes, they have their live action show, but this will be animated. It's quite interesting looking. I tried to start Altered Carbon, the show live action, and just couldn't get hooked, but people are talking me into it a bit, so I might check that out. But this re-sleeved actually looks really good from this trailer, so maybe I'm all about that. Anna DuVernay and Warner Bros. are teaming up to adapt Wings of Fire, a very popular YA fantasy series. The Dragon Prophecy fans should be quite excited because not only has Anna DuVernay crossed several genres in her career, but she is Oscar nominated. Excited for you all. Yes, genuinely, I like being happy for others. To those of you who say I shouldn't be so happy for other people's series doing well, I don't care. And are you one of the Lost in Space fans out there? Well, apparently there's not enough of you because it's going away, I'm sorry to say. Yes, Danger Will Robinson, your reality is coming to a close. It seems that this series, which has found its home in Netflix, did not find a large enough audience to justify its continuation. So while it has been renewed for its third season, that will be the conclusion for this reboot of Lost in Space space. And in setting the record straight news, the last story I want to talk about today and one I want to dive into a bit, Josh Boone, friend of the channel and director of the new Mutants movie that has been in development for quite some time, has set the record straight, as this headline says, with this bold proclamation right at the beginning. Everybody said we did reshoots. We've never done reshoots. So I'm not going to go through this entire article, but what's important to take away is that the version of New Mutants that is hitting theaters is the original vision. It's not the rumored reworking that was happening. It's not some messy, oh, Marvel's taking over, trying to incorporate in the MCU, like some people are saying. No, this is the original vision from the director and writers, and that is what is being released uh, later this month. No, it's March, not April. In April. <laughs> I very much so recommend checking out this article if you're interested in, like, behind-the-scenes Hollywood politics. It can kind of show you how these movies get delayed and how rumors get started, but it includes quotes from the director, Josh Boone, and Messi Williams saying, no, they made exactly the movie they wanted to. They never did reshoots. There were talks about re-editing it and all this stuff, but because of the merger, that was prevented, and the new mutants we are getting is the original vision for that story, which to me is really great to hear. I don't ever really want to see a studio step in and recraft a story with reshoots after the fact, so good on you, Josh. I'm glad you're able to set the record straight and I am looking forward to this one. Anyway, those are the stories I wanted to bring to your attention today. What did you most like hearing about? Let me know in the comments down below. Like and subscribe if you have not already. Hit the Patreon if you want to support what I do here. And have a good one, y'all. Peace!